Hey guys, I'm Mr. Widget, and today we're going to learn about the business building strategy game, Widgets and Digits. Widgets and Digits combines engine building, marketplace trade, and push your luck mechanics for an experience that'll leave you feeling like a real CEO. It was created by Joseph Bugby and Alexander Chang and was published by the Friendly Bee Game Company. Games take about 30 to 60 minutes, and it's for ages 14 and up. This game comes with two expansions for a total of four game modes. Today, we're gonna to learn about the first game mode, also known as Classic Mode. This is the recommended game mode for everyone learning how to play Widgets and Digits. One thing to be aware of is that this video was filmed with an in-progress prototype version of the game. That means that some of the art and components you see pictured might be different from the final versions that'll be in your game. And with that, let's learn how to play. All right, let's begin by setting up the game. To start, you're going to want to grab this marketplace board and put it in easy reach of all players. There's three major compartments to this marketplace board. At the top, you have the resource markets. At the bottom, you have the fiscal year tracker and the labor market. The labor market is part of the Worker Wars expansion, and we'll be talking about that in another video. Okay, let's start by talking about these resource markets. There's one resource market for every resource in the game. The raw materials market corresponds to these raw materials resources. The parts market corresponds to these red parts resources. And the finished goods market corresponds to these purple finished good resources. In each market, you have five rows and three columns where resources can be placed for a total of 15 available spaces per market. If you'll notice, in a two-player game, you're actually only gonna use the first two columns of each market. In a three and a four-player game, you'll use the whole thing. To begin, we're gonna to wanna to start by putting the starting inventory of resources in each market. Starting inventory spaces are denoted by these star icons. You can see them in the center of the space. There's a total of five starting inventory icons for a two-player game, and eight starting inventory icons for a three or a four player game. Okay, let's fill them up. All right, I've set up my board. You'll notice the board is set up for a three or a four player game because we're using the third column. Don't forget, you're gonna wanna leave remaining resources in easy reach of all players. They're gonna need them when they have to add resources to the market later. I'm gonna keep mine off screen for now. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take the fiscal year tracker, which is this black and green token, and put it on quarter one of the fiscal year. This is gonna be how we track the progress of the game over the course of the game. Next, you'll wanna place the game money in easy reach of all players. It might be helpful at this point to designate your most trustworthy friend as banker. Each player is gonna be starting with $20 as seed capital. You can give it to them now. These cards with the widget back are called the upgrade cards. You'll want to shuffle the deck and deal three cards face up in easy reach of all players. As the final part of the group setup, take this gold first mover advantage elephant token and place it aside for now. That'll be used for designating first player later on. You can take the bid tokens, blue worker cubes, and the blue boardroom battle card deck and return them to the box for now. Those are for expansion rules, and we won't be using them in this video. Let's talk about the player setup. Each player is gonna start with their own player mat. There are three major sections to the player mat. You have the supply chain at the top. This is where most of the action will be happening, and we'll talk about it more when we get into gameplay. You have the labor bidding and worker break room sections. These are part of the worker wars expansion, and we won't be talking about them in this video. And finally, we have the warehouse. This is where you'll be storing extra resources at the end of your turn. Players are also going to be starting with a Dweeb score sheet. Dweeb stands for the Department of Widgets, Entrepreneurship, Elephants, and Branding. It's where you're going to be registering your widget company and also scoring your final score at the end of the game. We'll talk about it more in a second. Finally, each player gets $20 of seed capital. Make sure you spend it wisely. You'll probably also need a pen. Now this doesn't come with the game, so you might want to dig one out of a drawer somewhere. All right, and with that, we're done with the setup. 
A completed setup for two players should look something like this. All right, now that the setup's complete, it's time to learn how to play. But there's one key ingredient that's missing. Widgets and Digits is a game about creating your own company. And you can't create a company without a brilliant product idea. We're gonna start every game by coming up with widget ideas. And whoever has the best widget idea gets the first mover advantage elephant token and gets to go first in the first quarter. Come on, I'll show you how it's done. We'll start each game by coming up with widgets. And whoever has the best widget gets the first mover advantage elephant and gets to go first in the first quarter. In order to come up with a widget, you're going to need to name your widget, tell us what it does, and come up with a catchy slogan. You can use the dweeb pad to register your widget with the Department of Widget Entrepreneurship, Elephants and Branding, making it official. I suppose you're wondering, what is a widget? That's a great question. Well, a widget can really be anything, real or imagined, as long as you think it would make a great business idea. Let me give you an example. Okay, here's my widget idea. It's called Ski Bro Tow, and what it is, is it's a towing service by Ski Bros for Ski Bros. Our slogan is, Van Bro No Go, call Ski Bro Tow. Well, I think that's a first mover advantage elephant winner for sure. As a fun little house rule, we usually say whoever's the last to finish writing has to read their idea first. There's nothing like a little public speaking pressure to get those pencils moving. Congratulations on forming your widget company. Now that we figured out who's going first, let's learn how to play. I'm gonna give you a quick 30 second overview of how the game is played, and then we'll go step by step through the process. If you need a reference for anything I'm about to say, you can flip your dweeb pad over for a handy dandy turn reference guide. Widgets and Digits is played over the four quarters of the fiscal year. During each quarter, each player will take one turn. Your turn has three phases, the investing phase, production phase, and upkeep phase. The investing phase is when you'll buy cards and resources. The production phase is when you'll run your widget making supply chain, which generally gives you your money or resources that you could sell for money. And then in the upkeep phase, you'll pay your labor costs and any storage fees for leftover resources. At the end of the game, the player with the highest net worth wins. Your net worth is the sum of your total cash on hand and the resale values of your upgrade cards. Why don't we start with understanding how the widget supply chain works? Let's take a look. Widgets are made in a four stage process called the widget supply chain. You will run this entire process in order once per turn during the production phase of your turn. You can tell what's happening in each stage by following along with the resource icons at the bottom of the stage. Please ignore this null symbol in the sourcing stage. This is an older way of describing what's happening and it won't be a part of your game. The widget making supply chain begins with the sourcing stage where you get a raw material for free. In the fabrication stage, raw materials are turned into parts. In the assembly stage, Parts are assembled into finished goods, and in the retail stage, finished goods are branded as your finished widget and sold at retail for $20 a piece. The number of resources at the bottom of the stage is called the capacity, and it gives you information about how many resources will be produced. As you can see, every base stage has one symbol. That means they all have a capacity of one. So, the sourcing stage will produce one raw material for free, and the fabrication stage can take up to one raw material and turn it into one part. The assembly stage can take up to one part and turn it into one finished good, and the retail stage can take up to one finished good and turn it into one set of $20. So even if you do absolutely nothing, you're gonna make $20 each turn. Pretty good, right? The question becomes, so I'm starting with $20, how can I turn that money into even more money? Let's go ahead and talk about upgrades. During the investing phase of your turn, you can buy upgrade cards. Upgrade cards increase the capacity of the stages in your supply chain. Let's take a look. 
Each upgrade card has an upfront cost to buy, so for example, this catapult costs $12 to buy, and a sell value in case you want to sell it later, you get about half of your money back, $6. It's color-coded to match the stage that it upgrades with the same symbol as the sourcing stage. At the bottom, you'll see how much it increases capacity by. The base sourcing capacity is one. You get one raw material for free. With this card, you now get two raw materials for free. The last part of the card that I haven't explained yet is this arm symbol, which is the labor cost. Don't worry, we'll talk about that more during the upkeep phase of your turn. So let's say you decide to buy this card. It costs $12, so we'll take your original 20 and we'll give you $8 and change. Purchasing this card replaces your base capacity and labor cost. So the new production of your sourcing stage is two raw materials for free with a labor cost of one. But we have a bottleneck because you can only use one raw material in your fabrication stage. If we were to move into production, what would happen is you would get two raw materials for free because of your new catapult. One of the raw materials would move to fabrication to become a part then that part would move on to assembly to become a finished good, and finally to retail where it would be sold for $20. But what happens to the leftover resource? Well, you can sell it back to the raw materials marketplace for a profit. At the end of my production phase, I can sell leftover resources to available spaces in the market for a profit. For example, I can sell my leftover raw material to this open space on the $4 row in the raw materials market, collecting a payment of $4. Notice, as I start to sell resources, spaces fill up and I'll be forced to sell at lower payment rows. This means prices will actually decline as you sell resources to a given market. So, in summary, for this turn, I started with $20, I bought this catapult for $12, leaving me $8 left over. The catapult produced two raw materials. One went all the way through my process, giving me $20, and the other one I sold to the raw materials market for a $4 profit. This leaves me with a total of $32 at the end of my production phase. After the production phase is over, you move into the final phase of your turn, called the upkeep phase. During the upkeep phase, you pay the labor cost of your supply chain as well as storage fees for any leftover resources. The labor cost of your supply chain is simply the sum of the individual labor costs for each stage. And yes, you do have to pay your labor costs whether or not you used a stage. All right, we didn't store any resources this round, so the sum of our labor costs is simply $4. I'll go ahead and take this. And that ends my turn with a total of $28 left over in cash. And now the turn would pass to the next player. Let's take a look at what player two's turn might look like. First thing we do is draw to replace the card that player one had purchased. Notice cards do not replace until the next player's turn. One way around that is to pay for a card refresh. A card refresh will discard the three cards that are available to the trash and draw three new ones. The cost to refresh cards starts at $1 in Q1 and goes up every single quarter up to $4 in Q4. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. I'm going to pay $1 since it's still Q1, so I'll get $19 in change. We're going to go ahead and discard these three cards and we'll draw three new ones. Okay, so these are our new cards. Now it's my investing phase, so I can buy cards and resources. I'm probably gonna to wanna to start with buying a card, and this time I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my assembly stage by buying this QC Cat card. It cost me $4, so I'm down to 15. But before we finish my investing phase, let's take a look at my supply chain and see if I'm ready to run production. I have the new QC cat card on my supply chain and notice it replaced the base production capacity and labor costs of my original assembly stage. 
So the new capacity of my assembly stage is now I can take up to two parts and turn them into two finished goods. But there's a problem because I'm only going to be producing one part from my base fabrication stage. In other words, I have a bottleneck. I'm not producing the number of parts that my QC cat can take. So how am I going to get another part? Well, if you'll remember, the marketplace is not just a place where you sell resources, it's also a place you can buy them. Let's take a look. So it looks like the parts market has parts for sale. You'll notice the row value is not just the amount of money you get paid when you sell resources, it's also the amount of money you have to pay to buy resources. In this case, if I want to buy this part, it'll cost me $8. Luckily, I have some money left over for my investing phase. I'll go ahead, pay 15, get $7 and change, and pick up this part. All right, let's run production. So we start with the sourcing phase, where I get a raw material for free. This raw material is going to move over to my fabrication stage, where I can turn up to one raw material into one part. And so I've produced a part and I bought a part, and both of them are taken by my QC cat, who has the capacity to take up to two parts and turn them both into finished goods. And I'll have two finished goods. But uh-oh, we've got another bottleneck because I can only take up to one finished good in my base retail stage. So I'll just take this guy and turn it into $20. And just like last time, I have a resource left over. I think we know what to do with this. And we're back to the marketplace. It looks like finished goods sell for $14. I'll go ahead and sell my leftover finished good. Notice I bought the part for $8, but the finished good I created, I was able to sell for 14. Now that's an upgrade. All right, here's my $14. Let's take it back to my supply chain to finish off my turn. Here's the $14 I got for selling my finished good. Also, I had the 20 I made for putting one finished good through retail and the $7 I was left over. That was a pretty good production phase. The final phase of my turn is again the upkeep phase. Let's start by adding up my labor cost. With my new QC cat, it's three, four, five, six dollars total. So I'll pay that plus any storage fees for leftover resources. I don't have any again this turn. And that leaves me with $35 total. Pretty nice. Now, you don't always have to sell resources into the marketplace. You can choose to store them in your warehouse. It costs $1 per resource per turn to store them. Once all the players have taken their turn, go ahead and discard any leftover upgrade cards and draw three new ones to replace them. Advance the fiscal year tracker one quarter and pass the first mover advantage elephant token to the next player. A couple rules you might find helpful. During the investing phase, you're also welcome to sell resources. So if you have any leftover from the previous turn, or if you accidentally bought some, you're welcome to sell them back and you won't really take any loss. If you wanna sell upgrade cards, you would also sell them during the investing phase. Remember, the sell value is the red number here and that's how much money you would get back. The only real rule is that before you proceed to the production phase, you need to make sure you have all the cards and resources that you're going to be using. The final rule to remember is that you can buy and sell as many resources, cards, and refreshes as your available cash will allow during the investing phase. You aren't limited by any kind of actions. All right, let's talk about the end of the game. After the last player has taken the last turn in quarter four, the game is now over. Go ahead and take out your dweeb pad and tally up your final score. Your final score is the sum of your total cash on hand and the resale value of all your upgrade cards. Whoever has the highest net worth at the end of the game is the winner. Congratulations on winning widgets and digits. The winner of the game gets to record the name of their company and their final score on the wall of widget winners on the inside cover of the box. But remember, it's not just about winning and losing. It's about the kind of company you were able to create. If you flip over the rule book, you'll find on the back cover a score ranking sheet. 
you can take a look and see what kind of business you were able to create. If you managed to make it to the legendary Turtlenecks and Magazine covers, congratulations, you're a true master of widgets and digits. And I invite you to try out some of the expansion modes for a little bit more challenging and strategic experience. And with that, we've completed our walkthrough for Widgets and Digits Classic Mode. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play. If you have any leftover questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section or check out the rulebook for a more detailed explanation. And stay tuned for parts two and three of the walkthrough where we go through the rules for the included expansions, Worker Wars, and Boardroom Battle. Thanks for watching and enjoy playing Widgets and Digits.